Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie. If you're new here, I upload a beauty Bible and lifestyle video. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. I forgot to put my rubber bands on, but it's been taking me a long time to sit down and film, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it. But for today's video, I just have my Q&A get ready with me. Finally, I asked you guys, let me see exactly how long ago I asked you guys on Instagram. Um, and also, do y'all think I should post my Q&As on TikTok as well? But, um, All right, so we're just gonna start getting ready. Um, let me put my hair back. And we're gonna start answering questions. It looks like I cut myself bangs, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm not cute right now. I feel like this is very 80s. All right, so. Did I get any other questions? All right. Ooh. So my first question is, are you close with your husband's family? So am I close with my husband's family? Am I family? Mm. I'm close with my immediate family from my mom. So like my mom and my sisters and then my sisters from my dad. I'm pretty close to except for one sister. We're not all that close, but we're also not like enemies, I guess that would make sense. Like, like, we coexist and like we hang out when the opportunity is there but like I wouldn't call us like close okay. and then um, with my husband's family kind of the same thing um, I'm not we get along um, but like I don't message them they don't message me like like we'll check on each other through Brian if that makes sense so, like they'll check on me through Brian ask how I'm doing and I'll check on them through Brian and ask how they're doing and things like that but like we all like each other like we all get along so i don't know i guess i would have needed more specification on what you meant by close this next one's pretty good it's somewhere i would like to go that's on my bucket list i don't really have a bucket list of places like literally the place i'd like to go that's on my bucket list is like the only thing that's on my bucket list and that would just have to be something tropical preferably like the caribbeans or jamaica or anything like that but again that's there's a reason why that's on a bucket list and i think brian's honestly the same like there's nowhere that we would just like love to go because honestly all right next question who was my childhood crush um in third grade this is the moment i knew i liked black boys there was this little boy named jonathan i still remember his last name y'all <laughs> and he was like my first crush ever and he used to flirt with me too but then ended up like talking to some other little girl and that's the moment i knew i was ugly as a kid but um yeah not really i didn't <laughs> never mind this is going here there and everywhere but yeah his name was jonathan it was a soon does a minute that's the second i knew i liked little black that i was gonna like a black man and get married to a black man because Ever since Jonathan, I didn't like nothing else. And that's because I didn't even date Jonathan. I just thought he was cute. <laughs> How I swear, I'd be looking back at myself and I'm like, Allie, you're so cringe. So cringe. No wonder you were bullied. My next question is favorite church event I have been to and why? It would have to be whenever I was going to my old church and we used to take um, the youth to summer camp. What was it called? I know like the school is called Texas Bible Institute, but I forget what actual, like what they call the actual camp. Anyways, I don't remember, but like they always have like cool things and stuff. But mine was like the very first year that I ever went with the youth because just God did so many big things there. Like he helped me, uh, like it was a good time of fasting because this was right after Brian was like asking me to be his a girlfriend and like we were talking about getting married and I told him like hey I just really needed to fast on it and pray about it like I just didn't want to say yes you know and so um 
it kind of helped me fast talking to him and like getting distance from him because out at that camp like you don't get a cell phone signal unless you're outside and a lot of the times that Brian and I would talk were at nighttime whenever we would have to be inside in the little dorms with the girls that we had like that were under us that we were chaperoning I guess you could say that we were chaperoning and because Brian was in the oil field so really like the only he would sleep during the day and like the only time that we would talk was at night and when I couldn't talk to him and so like he was praying I was praying and it was just so good and then I received the gift of speaking in tongues and when I tell you like just so much things happened there like oh and I'm using the and I'll have everything linked down below but um using the BH Cosmetics Mimosa palette but yeah like it was just I don't know how to explain it received the gift of speaking in tongues and then like the next time we went Brian and I were actually married and we were youth leaders and um so many people from other churches would like just walk up to us like leaders and these are like older leaders like they're not like young married couples like Brian and I were Brian and I were probably like the youngest married couple and like the rest were like I don't know I feel like our church was the only one that had like a single woman that was a youth leader it's neither here nor there but um so like it was like i'm just trying to put emphasis on that like all the other churches that went their leaders were like well into like their late 30s 40s and things like that and there was two couples that came and prayed over brian and they were just like man like god's gonna do great things for y'all like just like god was giving them words to speak over us and a lot of them would just come up to us and be like i don't know why i feel drawn to you god's telling me to tell you all this and this is both brian and i standing there and um yeah they were just i don't know like it's so crazy how god specifically uses people to to tell his people what he uses a lot of the times we're looking like for a direct sign or a direct answer straight from god and a lot of the times he uses people and we forget that that god uses people like he uses me he uses you um just what end do you want to be on of him using is the biggest question so yeah it was pretty cool and god has done great things and has led us very far and has been using us to fulfill his will and are we perfect at it no nobody is because we all fall short we all sin and fall short of the glory of god but we do our best and we're striving for perfection and we've definitely been growing definitely been growing but yeah i would have to say going to those camps with the youth were my favorite and it's probably like honestly the main thing i miss about going to that church main and only thing i miss about going to that church i know that sounds so mean so harsh so ugly but um yeah just that's what i miss the most so the next question is do you serve in your church like in the nursery or usher the question is the question the answer is no i don't um i provide a lot i'm more of a provider than a server um brian and i will always donate always help brian um assist in the children's sunday school i just know me and i'm not good with other people's kids does that make sense like I barely have the patience for my own kids and I can discipline my own kids I can't I don't got patience for other people's kids I don't and I ain't got patience to deal with this these gentle parenting movement type of kids I just know I don't have the patience because my kids I can take stuff away I could tell them do x y and z and then I feel like another kid will try to talk back to me and I'm not having that. Nope, not having it. So do I serve? No, but I donate a lot to the church, whether it be food, um, giving an offering, um, a sacrifice of my time. Like if they need an errand to be run or something like that, I will do that. I will sign up for meal trains whenever like somebody has a baby or somebody's sick and they need somebody to provide meals. Like I do that type of thing. I'm not so much a nursery type of girl. I did offer to clean the church, but it's a man that leads that. And yeah, I get nervous talking to other men that aren't Brian. I don't know. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. 
I know I'm not, but like I do feel like I'm doing something wrong whenever I do that. Okay, so the next question says, the best advice from you to moms, what is your favorite brand of vitamins for your skin? My best advice from me to moms is to remember that there's no cookie cutter mold to parenting. Your kids are not cookie cutter. You are not cookie cutter. So every family is going to look different. Every family is going to run different. So it doesn't matter if Miss Susie down the street can always keep her house in order. Her kids may not need what your kids need and she can tend to her house. And it doesn't matter if Sally down the street can bake and cook every single meal and you eat out three times a week. That doesn't make you a bad mom. Everybody's life is different. Everybody has their own struggles. You mom, and as long as your kids are happy, healthy, fed, and they have morals and you are teaching them morals and standards and values, you're doing a good job. You are doing a good job. Especially with this whole gentle parenting and oh, you're a bad parent if you do this, you're a bad parent if you do that. No, you're not. No, you're not. Do what works for you and your family. Now, I'm not condoning you to beat your kids. I'm not condoning you to mentally abuse your children. What I am saying is your parenting doesn't have to look like everybody else's. You're not always going to be cool, calm, and collected. Um, yeah. And I wish people would show that more. Like, don't just show me the times that you were successful at gentle parenting. Show me the times that you struggled. Show me the times that you felt like, oh, I really want to hit this kid and how you came over it. And not hit, but like spank. Like, show me a time where you came, where you came over that. A time where you really just wanted to give into spanking and how you overcame that. So yeah, just always remember your parenting doesn't have to look like everybody else's. And as long as you're teaching your kids values, morals, respect, and how to be good loving people and they are fed and they are happy and at the end of the day they can say I love mommy I love my dad and they tell you you're the best mom and the best dad you're doing a great job because I can't tell you how many days I feel like I'm failing because I'm not the perfect gentle parent and my son will just come up to him come up to me and be like you're the best mom ever even if I just lost it on him and like yelled at the top of my lungs because that's me I don't want to hit I really don't and so to prevent that like I will yell and I don't like that about myself and it makes me feel like crap when I give into it so and even after a moment like that like and I'll apologize and I but I do apologize let me preface by starting that when I lose it I do apologize to my kids I am not above that they are humans I am human they deserve apologies just like I would expect an apology from my husband if he yelled at me all psycho so yes, I do apologize, we calm down, we come back together, and they still tell me, hey, you're the best mom. So yeah, your parenting's not gonna look like everybody else's, and that is completely okay. Your house is not gonna be in pristine condition like someone else's, and that is completely okay. You, not, you may not cook three meals a day, seven days a week, and that is okay. And then your second part of that was, what was my favorite hair, skin, and nail vitamin? There's one that I take from the reserve, and um, I have a sponsored video on it, but I'll still link the website down below. Um, yeah, my coupon code doesn't work anymore. I can reach out to them, but uh, yeah, it's their hair, skin, and nails because it's like all natural, and it still tastes good. I swear, the inner corner of lashes will be the death of me because that's probably the only part that I struggle with constantly. But anyways, on to the next question. What is your all-time favorite makeup brand? What brand do you hate? Ooh. I will never use anything from Benefit Cosmetics because they support Planned Parenthood. And there have been so many videos of Planned Parenthood and how they do really, really late-term abortions. And then they discard of the body parts like they're trash. And, um... That was brought to my attention. I'm honestly not going to go and do all the research, but when something's brought to my brought to my attention, I get it. I get it, but they're also not if they don't care about testing on, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, um probably won't ever support Benefit makeup brands I love. I can't say I've come across a Milani product that I've ever not liked. So I guess I love Milani. 
because I like to think about like okay what's a what, what is a brand that I've tried just about anything from and I have liked everything and I'd have to say that's Milani yep Milani okay. next question is what ed oh wait this one what's the mess what's what's the best marriage advice you've been given how is life with three boys okay so I'm gonna answer the first part what is the mess best marriage advice I've been given is keep people out your business because you don't want to be running to your family every time you and your husband get into a spat and then they're gonna be and then y'all are gonna work it out five minutes later so yeah because then it's going to make people think like, man, this marriage is not working. Why did they get married? When the whole time it's just a spat, a misunderstanding. And yeah, and then some marriage advice that I have not been given, but that I give to everyone is seek to understand your part, your spouse before you seek to be understood. That's probably my biggest thing is that with Brian, I always wanted to be understood. I always wanted to be understood. I always wanted him to understand me that I was not in a position to understand him. And there, it caused a lot of arguments because I was never understanding him, but I always wanted him to understand my side. So seek to understand before you seek to be understood, but also it goes both ways. So if both of you are seeking to understand before you seek to be understood, it balances itself out. But yeah, that was probably the best, is keep people out your business because uh, spats don't last always. And everybody don't need to learn about, know about every single spat that you have because they're going to happen. They're going to come. It doesn't mean that your marriage is garbage. None of that. They're going to come. How is life with three boys? Now that I'm homeschooling, life is crazy. Um, it's kind of nice, though, because they do feel like they always have to help me or that mom needs help or that mom like needs their muscles. Um, there's also a lot of days where I do a lot of yelling and I don't like to, but some days are just overwhelming, overstimulating, and they, they love to love on me. And some days I'm just like, please stop touching me. So it's very bittersweet, but mostly sweet. <laughs> Advice for boys, mom, for boy moms. Um, my best advice that I could give you is that remember that your boys will one day become men, so raise them as young men and not boys. Because then they'll learn that sense of respect and they'll understand that women are to respect men as well as they are meant to love women. And so, um, yeah, to raise your sons with the respect, respecting the man that's in them because they will one day become men. Young men become men and yes, boys will always be boys. So young men will become men. So raise them as young men. I never baby talk my sons. I do not keep anything from them. I am very blunt within um, my teaching to them and I do not hide anything from them. They know what girls body parts are called and what they're for. They know what boys body parts are called. I have not taught them what they are for but they do know the gist of babies come out of moms and moms boobs are used to feed babies and so they know what our girl parts are called and boy parts are called so to and that's just a parenting tip in general it's just your kids understand what you allow them to understand so if you talk to them like they understand they will understand but if you keep holding back from them because you feel that they can't understand they'll never understand i feel like that was a lot of saying understand so yes when i say raise your boys with respect so that way they know to expect respect from women that's why I apologize to my and I would do it if I had a little girl but that's why I apologize to my kids when I have a bad moment okay and I'm not using the makeup for my shop my stash because I kind of felt like it'd be kind of boring to see me use the same makeup multiple times in videos so I put all of this fresh out of my makeup collection okay what is my favorite childhood memory I was a very upset child. I was always angry and I don't know why. Probably any time we were able to go to San Marcos and spend it with my cousins that we never saw during the summers or spring break, those were probably my favorite because I loved being over there. I think it's just because like it was out of town and it was these cousins that I never got to see. So it was always so fun. So yeah, that probably had to be my favorite is anytime we were able to go to 
San Marcos and spend it with my cousins and my aunt and uncle who like I said like we never got to see and my aunt was a stay-at-home mom so it's like she was always able to like take us to do stuff and things like that favorite couple memory so far I have so many mm. any memory where me and Brian are just like chilling playing a game or like cruising with music and the windows down and like we could either just be clowning each other or we could just really be having like deep intellectual conversation like those are my favorite memories with Brian because I feel like we grow so much together and like that love in us for one another like just grows deeper and fonder and I don't know I love it so yeah just anytime we're together like clowning or having deep conversation the one-on-one -on -one un uh What's the word I'm looking for? What is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I don't know the word I'm looking for. One of y'all probably know, but yeah. What is that word? It's gonna bother me. I love whenever we go on walks at the park and then we'll take the boys to play or whenever we, we don't do much as a family because Brian's always working. Or like whenever we go out to dinner together or lunch as a family. Cause those are not things that we get to do all the time and so yeah like taking the boys to a park and like we're all walking that intentional time with one another how to know when leave friends alone and that's whenever you're no longer growing together a lot of the times it's so hard to let go of friendships because you can be like well dang i went through this with that person we went through this but if that friend is still going through that and you're moving on it's time to let that friend go or they're just gonna hold you back um and sometimes it doesn't have to be like a big blow up, like exit of a friendship. Um, for instance, me and Karina, like we're not best friends anymore, but I can't say like we're on bad terms. We had a misunderstanding. We talked about the misunderstanding and then we both just decided like, okay, like it's probably best if we just keep our distance because we're on two different wavelengths like we're not on the same accord and it doesn't have to be like a big old blowout friendship I mean always leave the friendship with understanding of hey this is why I feel like I need to separate myself you know it's not to say that we can't link back up one day in the future but you're and and, and it's gonna be so hard to find the words to say nicely like you're not growing and I am like it's gonna be so hard to find a nice way to say that but sometimes those are the words that need to be said like hey I'm trying to grow you're comfortable with where you're at in life and I'm not trying to be stagnant and that's just how it has to be um for instance some friends may be mad because you share what 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 knowledge you have and they don't like it because it goes against the way that they want to live their lives and the things they want to do and I think that's another time to know okay like it's time to end this friendship because I'm not gonna watch you do bad I'm not gonna watch you wreak havoc on yourself and then want to correct you but then I'm wrong because I'm correcting you because whenever we love anyone we correct them so there's just so many things that I think you could look for but ultimately it's once you stop grow or once you realize that person's not trying to grow or you realize you're not growing being around that person um, we should constantly be in a state of growth constantly it could be small growth it could be big growth it could be life-changing growth but we should always constantly be in a state of growth and not stagnant especially not whenever you're trying to walk with Christ and I think that's the hardest whenever you're trying to sell out for Christ and they're trying to still hold on to pieces of the world that's another time to be like okay like we're definitely not understanding the word of God the same and yeah just yeah growth growth if you're not growing together it's time to go and especially like if you're still having like petty high school type arguments and you're like grown women what, what are we arguing for what's the purpose of this conversation what's really going on like 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 if you're having arguments with this friend and it's basically just about their feelings there's no solution and like it's not edifying if your friendship is not edifying i would say it's time to let that friendship go i don't know maybe that's why i ain't got no friends i got like one friend here that i like will still hang out with even though they're always busy but yeah it just i don't know i can't be around people 
My goal in life is not to be where I was last month or yesterday or the day before. I should have had some growth within the last 24 hours. And if some and if people are just okay with never seeing growth, yeah, you're not the friend for me. Or people who like to dwell in their pittiness. Now I'm just going into French types of people I can't really get along with. People who like to dwell in their pity and try to get you to dwell in their misery with them. Yeah, I can't be friends with you. I'm sorry. Because I'm not going to be miserable with you. And I'm definitely not going to hide my joy in the Lord from you. Because your life is not going how you want it. Okay, so um, favorite Bible verse. I feel like I say it all the time, but um, it's Isaiah 40, it's 31. For you will mount up on wings like eagles, you will run and not faint, you will walk, or you will, yeah, you will run and not faint, you will walk and not grow weary. Y'all know which one, I'll put it on the screen, but that's my favorite Bible verse. Cause I get discouraged easily. And the last one before I end this is my favorite alone time activity is probably doing my nails. I love to just give myself manicures and that's probably my favorite alone time activity. I feel like my, I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but I feel like I look not like right. And I think I'm going to leave my hair, I'm going to fix this, but I think I'm going to leave my hair like that. you guys and this is the completed look i went with the ponytail instead of a messy bun so yeah i really hope that you guys enjoyed this q a not sure when i'll post the next one since it does take me a long time to end up filming the q a and then you guys probably forget that y'all even ask me questions anyways because like i said i posted that on march 22nd it's may <laughs> it's may 19th so almost two months <laughs> to film that video but um yeah i love you guys always remember that jesus loves you more if you have not already please go ahead and give me a thumbs up also hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys Mwah.